Dawson was knocked down by Tomas Adamic, knocked down by Glenn Johnson, knocked down by a couple of now forgotten opponents relatively early in his career. That has been a small Achilles heel in his rise to the top of the light heavyweight division. Dawson working his jab early. Now Tarver begins to unleash his. Two southpaws in the ring against each other in the light heavyweight division. 20 years ago, Emmanuel, you almost never saw this. Now we are seeing it more and more and more often, partially because of fighters like Dawson, who is a natural right-hander and has fought in the southpaw stance ever since he walked into the gym. Yeah, because he was saying that was what his dad was boxing in the southpaw stance, so he picked up on it. Majority of the southpaws that I've been involved with are really right him, much like Marvin Hagler was. So many other fighters I work with, they're really in Monica Mora. And they just feel comfortable in that position. And if they are the star in the gym, other kids that come in, pick up on it, and want it to be just like them. And because of famous fighters like Moore, like De La Hoya, like Miguel Cotto and others, it's becoming a much more popular thing to do. And there may come a time 40 years from now when the overwhelming majority of the fighters in the sport are southpaws. I can easily see that happen. And, and how about the fact that it may logically make more sense. You throw about 75% of your punches with your lead hand. Why not make that your stronger hand? You're correct. You know, and looking at, even though both of these guys weighed in virtually about the same, according to the statistics when they measured in, it was identical in height. It just seems like it's, uh, Dawson being younger seems to be a little bit more thicker, a little bit more stronger looking, even though that's not the case, but he looks that way to me. Well, it, it looked as though Tarver had to make a sacrifice of some sort to make weight. And of course, when he made the Rocky Balboa, Tarver, while on the set, rose as high as 233 pounds, putting himself in the ironic position of having to acknowledge after the loss to Hopkins that coming back down, in weight to the light heavyweight area robbed him of all his physicality and it was ironic because of course he was the one who had derided Roy Jones for making exactly that claim about Jones's performances against him when Jones had gone up to heavyweight to fight John Ruiz. Well he's been fighting at 175 long enough now but that cannot be an excuse now he's adjusted to the weight. You know so far Tarver is moving his hands more than he did in the first fight at least early on. But those hands look pretty slow. But the moving his hands more is exactly the adjustment he made in winning the rematch, for instance, against Glenn Johnson. And the one thing that was interesting that even though Dawson is really determined to really win impressively, said this time, he has a lot of respect for Tava's left hand. Pretty good first round. More sustained combat in this first round than was the case through most of their first fight where they fought in sporadic skirmishes. But as it happened yet, is trading. When these two guys fight, a pattern seems to develop where one man mounts an offense and the other waits, and then they take turns. He got nothing, but I want you to be careful. I want that jab always pumping. All right? Yeah. Keep pumping and moving your head and keep that defense up. All right? Keep stepping in with the jab. Mm -hmm. Bend your legs a little bit. All right? Slip in mm -hmm. the slide like we're doing. The jab is the key. Mm -hmm. He got nothing. He got nothing. Speed and your combinations. That's all we can do. Mm -hmm. No, put the jab with more confidence. Okay? okay? okay. Step in with it. Okay. I'm going to make sure you're left hand up here because you're trying to hit with the hook. He ain't got one hand, T. You got the tight hand up. Don't back up. Yes. You got to finish with the hook every time I mean, when you throw the right hand. Okay, guys. When he starts his flurry, right. drop that hook on him. He's got to look. He's got his left hand right here. Let's so take a look with the hook around. Okay, guys, let's go. Send us out, mouthpiece. Send us out, mouthpiece. Well, I called it a pretty good first round, but maybe I was talking too much to get it right. Knopke Box couldn't disagree more, as they saw Dawson landing 8 out of 50 and Tarver landing 5 out of 50. In other words, a relatively cautious, inactive first round in which neither fighter got a lot done. Well, but compared to expectations, Jim, <laughs> maybe it exceeded your expectations. No, I think I was just talking too much. It, but both, that happens. Both corners are telling their fighters, be busy with more jails. It's very interesting. And they're fighting almost like a mirror image of each other the way they're fighting now. Only Dawson seems to be a little bit stronger and more, more powerful with his punches. But they're fighting exactly the same speed, the same rhythm. In the first fight, Tyler spent more time on defense right about there. He started to cover up more in a more of a defensive mode. He's not doing that tonight.
When Tarver knocked Roy Jones out in their second fight, he did it by stepping forward and countering a Roy Jones right hand. He has not tried to counter anything Dawson's throw. No, both guys are very defensive. They don't really see a really good opportunity to throw a punch. They're reluctant to pull a full power punch because it may get caught with something. But Tarva does have a good left hand. He shoots it, he turns his entire body through when he shoots his left hand. He stretches all the way out. Body shots by Dawson. Tarver holding his guard up and blocking the upstairs stuff. Now Dawson gets a jab between Tarver's gloves. Tarver lands a right hand himself. Dawson's got his jab on track this round. True, but Tarver's blocking a fair number of them. Yeah, but, but he's pumping enough that he's landed three or four solid back. And Dawson got in a good left and right to the body there. Dawson is out working him, but I don't see any really clear that punches landing that much. Really, I need one for the most part. But now Tav is going back to the same style he fought before, but he's moving forward this time, where before he was standing in one spot and backing up. But he's moving forward and trying to force himself into Dawson before he can get a good shot with that left hand. Dawson got one left hand through in all of that flurry. Tarver remains mostly in a defensive posture whenever Dawson shows offensive intent. But he's making Dawson throw a lot of punches as he's moving forward on him. And really, as you said, only one left hand came out of that whole combination, probably about 20 punches altogether. But still, Dawson has been busy enough in this round to quadruple his number of connected punches. Dawson did land a good right hook on the inside earlier. Meanwhile, Tarver looks like he's getting a little closer with that right hand. With, excuse me, the left hand. Bird warns Dawson for hitting after the bell. Appropriately so. Monday, June 15, it's the premiere of the new HBO series, Joe Buck Live. Join the Emmy Award-winning broadcaster as he talks live with some of the biggest names in sports. And on Wednesday, July 15, the night after the baseball All-Star game, it's the premiere of the HBO Sports documentary, Ted Williams, a look at the life of the splendid splinter, baseball great and American icon. Uh, now, when he starts punching now, let your hands go. All right. Okay? You got to let okay. your hands go. Don't do the defensive thing. Okay? When you move, when you beat him, you Very good. Good pressure, but now we got to put the punches with it. Take the deep breath. Hands out, mouthpiece. Okay, let's go. Well, I said quadruple. That was a bit extravagant. But Dawson, who landed 8 out of 50 in the first round, was 20 out of 77 in round number two. And that reduced Harvard's punch output from 50 to 39. And he landed only seven. So round two clearly belonged to Bad Chad Dawson, the more active, more aggressive fighter. I would say busier fighter, but, but uh, Tarver is really putting a lot more pressure on him now. And uh, seemingly, it seems, up, just looking up, at his facial expression in the corner, his confidence is building up. Meaning Tarver. Harbor's confidence is growing, you think? I think so. I look at that. I, I just, I can see in the corner that his confidence is growing. Well, that's not going to help his confidence no. to get ripped by a one-two like that. Well, Dawson is just out working with him. He's playing a numbers game. Sooner or later, he's going to have to start landing shots. You know, in the rematch with Eric Harding, and that was a much younger Antonio Tarver. But Harding had beaten Tarver in their first fight and looked early like he'd, all, he'd already, or he'd once again had Tarver's number until Tarver turned the fight around with one punch. He's really big and underrated puncher with the left hand and he's shooting a variety of lefts at Dawson looping lefts short lefts on the inside it's a dangerous shot well if he still has the pop to do damage it's conceivable that Dawson has the chin to cooperate but that's a pretty big shot from Tarver, and Dawson handled it, stepped back once, and went forward again. And this is what was a pattern of the first fight. When one guy's doing the punching, the other guy's on defense, going, just walking in, and then the other one will take turn and they reverse rolls again.
Tarver suddenly switches to a conventional stance. Dawson predicted that Tarver Stop. would do that at times during the fight. Pick him up, Jay. Pick him up. Huh. Now Tarver back in his normal southpaw stance. And Dawson looks so strong, though. I'm still just amazed at the strength that he puts. And this, this round is totally reversed of the last round. The same round, but reversed characters. A round that I think Thomas won just about simply out working Dawson. Just as it was the other way around, the other way, last round. Certainly after throwing only 39 punches in the second round, Tarver was determined to do more with his hands here in round three. As he was in the third round of their first fight. Maybe his best round in the fight. All right, free up your hands, free up your hands. There you go. Antonio Tarver's gotten married within the past couple of weeks. There's the wife, Denise Tarver. She's one of the group of 16 people who came into the meeting with Antonio yesterday, and she can come back anytime. Okay, don't look for the big one. If he's giving you something, just keep touching until you find the opening. Okay? Let's go, baby. Let's get back putting the pressure on him. Don't let him walk to you like that. Okay, hard jab. Move your feet, he can't touch you. Familiar figure okay, of Buddy ball, McGirt. If she's walking straight in, don't grab him in the, in the grab corner, him. and you Touch can see that. There's our mouthpiece. Well, I didn't. Well, I didn't catch the graphic. Went away too fast. Copy box numbers through three. Dawson, 36 out of 165, and Tarver box. has thrown 165 punches, but has landed only 16 by CompuBox count. A 10% connect percentage, not very good. Harold, how do you have it? Yeah, look at you. I got a two rounds to one. Uh, 29, 28, bad chair, Dawson. Just, there's no question that he won rounds one and two. He did just what you see in there. Combinations, getting off first, the hardest shots, walking Antonio Tarver down, backing him up, you know, just not, not passing him. But around three, I thought Chad Dawson just took the round off. Tarver touched him enough to steal the round. Two to one, Chad Dawson. Dawson acknowledges that he was cautious in the first fight, says that if he gets Tarver in trouble here and feels like he has him going, he will take risks to try to score the knockout, which would galvanize more public support. Here in round four, it looks as though he's thinking aggressively again. He's thinking aggressively. His, his, his punching power and strength and youth overall it just seems to be too much. And going down the stretch, I really don't think that physically Antonio is going to be able to hold him off. You know, Dawson does not have a great outside the ring story, or at least not an unusual one. Um, he's not a big knockout puncher. There are no big name opponents for him at light heavyweight. For him to become a star, he's going to have to continue dominating opponent after opponent. And to really become a star, he's going to have to do maybe even a little more than what he's done. We have hands. Hands this is what you spoke hands about on camera prior to the fight, Max. How does he prove that he's the best in a vapid division? How does he galvanize public support to get fights with other star fighters outside that division? Can he lure a Joe Calzaki to come back? Seems unlikely. Well, this isn't going to do it, although he's fighting well. Uh, when I said he's inconsistent, I was really referring to the second half of fights where he seems to either lose focus or fatigue. I don't think that's going to be the problem tonight. I think his focus and determination is just tremendous tonight. And uh, I think that it, maybe I'm, it looks like he just seems to be so much stronger in this fight than he was before. Hard oh. left hand. Carver momentarily stunned. Dawson with a left hand lead over the top. Locked and clean. Yeah, but it's too, too much power. I mean, Tava's power straight punching head, punch head, punch head has nowhere near the power of Dawson's. Good body shot by Dawson, followed by another right hook upstairs. And, and there you see Dawson's kind of uh, cautious temperament. He really did hurt Tarver, but he was um, cautious. He didn't just run into Tarver, because Tarver can punch, and a hurt fighter with a big punch is a dangerous fighter. But that kind of sensibility leads to a lot of decision wins. Tarver a good hand. left hand over the top. Dawson countered it with a left up and under. Another hard right hand lands for Tarver, and Dawson again chases Tarver back. Time, time. 
Pretty good round. Would have been nice to see another 30 seconds of it. Take a nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. Nice slow deep breath. Nice deep breath. Okay, T. Keep touching, touching. Now listen, what you got to do with this guy? You got to stand your ground with this guy and break his momentum. You understand? Heavy box number showed you it was a terrific round for Dawson, who landed 25 punches in the round. That's a high number. Here's where they went. Nine of them on the chin or to the face of Tarver. Five punches to the outside of Tarver's head. Three of them with the right hand okay, and two with the left hand. And then mixing okay, the body attack around. downstairs, seven punches to the left side of Tarver's rib cage and four punches to the right side. So pretty evenly distributed across Tarver's body, the attack from Bad Chad Dawson. 17 of Dawson's 25 connected punches in the round were power shots. And remember, power shots, anything other than a jab. Body punches are power shots. Crosses are power shots. Hooks are power shots. Uppercuts are power shots. Dawson throws all those punches. He's very much improving over the course of the past couple of years as a combination punch. Yes, I, I think that, it, that overall he, he realizes that that he just, just boxing is not going to do it for Tava. So he's just going in and just going to be. He's trying to just be physical with Tava. Oh, he's, tonight. he's starting to take some more risks in the last round and a half. Watch your and head, watch your greater head. risk is greater reward, at least for the boxing public. Th but uh, it is a risk. I mean, Tarver's a puncher. But I think I think the risk is good. I think uh, Tarver's punches are too wide. They're looping too much. And they're losing the steam somewhere on the Whereas Dawson's Dalva, punches are much more accurate and compact. So even if he oh, up, trades for Tarver, I think he has the advantage. Because his punches are way more powerful. The big change in the last four minutes to which Max alluded there is they're trading punches now. No longer does one man punch while the other watches. Suddenly we have exchanges, and none of this happened during the first 12-round fight last fall. And I think we suddenly have exchanges because that hard left hand by Tad Dawson has shown Antonio Tarver that he needs to get moving if he's going to be in this fight. And incidentally, uh, Chad told us in our fighter meeting yesterday he did not want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Antonio Tarver. So Tarver maybe has lured Chad into the kind of fight he wanted. Cut with the left hand by Chad Dawson. We have a real fight here over the last couple yeah. rounds. And, and Tava has got a good chance. He's never been knocked out. In fact, I mean, Salem and I have a son, even in trouble. But it's turned out to be a fight. And Dawson's trying to impose his youth here. Yes. Maybe that's playing into Tarver's hands, but he's the faster guy. He's the more energetic fighter, and he's trying to prove it. When Tarver was clearly physically incapacitated against Bernard Hopkins, some ringside observers thought that Hopkins could have gone for the knockout. In a mark of either respect or innate caution, Bernard chose to coast to an easy decision. But keep that jab on him, because he can't do nothing when you pop that jab, all right? Keep him going backwards and nice and relaxed. Watch out for the uppercut, keep mm -hmm. that good defense up, and keep going underneath. Mm -hmm. Bring it underneath and keep turning him. When you talk, mm -hmm. turn him. Don't start to push Come on. Push with your body. Push with your body. He's going to push you. And when he lean on you, just turn him. Second out. Second out. This may be the biggest clean punch of the entire night with this left uppercut by Tava right there. It's a great shot right between the gloves. And both guys have great defense, so it's very hard to get any clean punches in tonight by either one of the fighters on each other. 
By CompuBox count, however, that uppercut was one of only nine punches Tarver landed in the fifth round. While throwing 62, Dawson also was counted with 62 attempted punches. He landed 21. So certain patterns that emerged in the first fight continue. One of them being that Dawson is the more accurate puncher, lands at a significantly higher rate. subtle change in Dawson in this fight from recent previous fights in that he's playing defense a little differently. It seems as though his intention is to land his punches and defensively, as opposed even to earlier in the fight, Jim, he's setting up shots. He's letting Tarver move his hands in order to counter to land his shots, not simply to play defense. He's fighting him as a much more seasoned fighter, and as you said, he's really imposing his youth, as you were saying earlier, Max. He's He's using his use and his strength on the man, facing his punches well. But before, he was a busier fighter, but not so well in terms of placing the punches. He's fighting a different fight this time. Well, one element in being able to mount effective offense is do you trust your chin? And Dawson seems to be showing us that he's a little bit more trusting of his own ability to take shots. And, and maybe he's felt Antonio's punches and don't feel that they're that bad. In terms of how this rates so far against his performance in the first fight against Tarver, I think it's fair to say that Tarver's more motivated for this fight. Could very well be his last fight on a sort of big stage, at least. Yeah, Tarver's fighting a much, much up, more determined up, fight, fight than the last fight. Well, as he said to us yesterday, I seem to have to be in this position in order to fight at my best. Question, what position? Answer, my back is against the wall. Work, I need that jab pumping. Don't forget that Good. jab. Good sitting down on your punches. Bend on your legs. You okay? Yep. Okay. All right. Keep sitting down on them shots. All right. Stepping around. Keep stepping around. That's all you got to do. Right. Step around. Nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. I need more of the jab. Bend them shots. All right. Stepping around. Keep stepping around. That's all you got to do. Right. Step around. Nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. I need more of the jabs. Yeah. All right, more double, triple. Mm -hmm. All right, and, sit, and move your head. And don't forget your defense, man. You're lagging a little bit. All right, bring that defense hey, hard. Hey, Slowly listen, you're in good shape, baby. Okay? You, you know you're in good shape, team. And you know you can fight all night. We got six more rounds. Let's Show go out there. All right, make it a dog fight, baby. They don't have to be okay. hard, baby. Just come on. Okay? Good. Make stand your ground, Antonio. Get up under those shots. Come on, okay? Come on, and when you're inside, just touch them downstairs. Okay. When you yeah, start to bleed, you crack them. CompuBox numbers through six rounds. Chad Dawson, 100 out of 365. And Antonio Tarver, 43 out of 341. Remember, in their first fight, Tarver up, threw 246 go, more punches than Dawson, averaging about 20 more punches per round. Here, Tarver is only throwing the same number of punches that Dawson throws. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> okay, Jim, 59, 55, five rounds to one. Hey, Chad Dawson. Jim, he's backing him up constantly. He's getting off first. He throws three, four, five punches at a time. I mean, he's just taking it to him. And overall, doing a heck of a lot more damage, without doubt. And just as you see there, he doubled the right jab. And that's what he's been doing all night. Backing him up, taking it to him, landing the clean the hardest shots. I think they're both bleeding from the mouth, by the way, Jim. Five to one, Chad Dawson.
fact, this is to be Antonio Tarver's last appearance on one of the sport's biggest stages. He's had a fascinating career. Yeah, I was just saying that he's fighting a very good fight, I think. I'm looking at considering such a brilliant young fighter. His defense has been pretty good, too. He, even though he gets hit a few times, it's very difficult for Dawson to hit him with a clean shot shot. And as soon as Dawson takes a break, Antonio's trying to take control over the fight again. Antonio's always had a high boxing IQ. Um, presented a difficult defensive target for fighters. And uh, I, I think his record in rematches is testament to his ability to hands adjust. Free, guys. Free up. Go. Had a very long amateur career, stretched his amateur Stop. career so that he could go to the Olympics at a relatively advanced age. He's fighting in Dawson, a guy in his prime who holds a, a dominant win against the reigning cruiserweight champion of the world, one division north. Tomas Adamic. Thomas landed some good left hand shots here. Landed a left hand inside, and Dawson shakes his head as if to say, you haven't hurt me. But that time, hurt Dawson's himself. right knee buckled momentarily as Tarver was landing an inside shot. And now Dawson comes back with a flurry of his own punches. This turned out to be a much, much better fight than probably anyone expected. I know than I expected. And Dawson just showed Tarver something. Sometimes when an older fighter makes a stand like that against a younger fighter, it has his way a little bit. And the younger fighter continues to fight hard. It could take some of the wind out of the older fighter's sails. I need to chin down, Chad. All right, I need to chin down. You okay? Mm -hmm. All I need is a chin down, baby. That's all I need. All right? Come on, Chad. I need the jabs. Don't forget the jabs. Mm -hmm. I want you to box smart. Box smart okay. now, okay? Because it's just you going into a shell. But you got to keep the... When he starts punching, stand your ground. You winning? Yes, but you got to fight this over a bit. Take it now, right? Here we see Antonio Tava land the left hand shot that really hurt Dawson, I think, for a few seconds. And then you see him follow through with a great flurry of punches from all angles. Suck us up! Suck us up! Suck us up! It was after that shake of the head that Tarver succeeded in landing a punch that momentarily buckled Dawson's right knee. But it was immediately following that that Dawson decided he needed to make an aggressive statement. He came back fighting, as Max Kellerman described to you. Combi box numbers in that round, Tarver 20 out of 67 to Dawson 17 out of 66. First time in the fight that Tarver landed more punches than did Dawson. Ten of those connects to Tarver in the final minute of the round. than at any other time in the fight. In round eight now, he's receded back to the energy level that he showed in the other rounds that he lost. And I think that has something to do with the way Dawson responded at the end of the last round. You know, Antonio can land good punches the same as Dawson, but it's just so much energy and excitement is created in Dawson because of the speed and the strength that he has. So his punches make you think that he's landing sometimes and doing more damage than what Tarver is landing sometimes just as much, but he just doesn't have that snap, the power in it, all the speed. Austin showing pretty good defensive skills, making Tarver miss for the last 30 or 40 seconds. 
right as he carefully picks his own spots. Now there's a good left hand by Antonio Tarr. Set it up with a quick jab and came right over the top. Again, Dawson's reaction. Not to be reckless, he keeps his hands up, but it's to start to pressure Tarver immediately. Break, 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 come out clean, come out clean. Come out clean, come out. Five seconds. By the way, Robert Bird doesn't get as much run as some of the other refs around here, but he's very good. He has uneventful fights. He's doing a good job, and he's staying out of the fight. And for the next four rounds, you got to make it a dog fight. You understand me? You got to make it a dog fight. You got to make it a dog fight. You're out jabbing this guy. Double, triple jab. Stop looking for the left hand. Okay? okay. Give him a nice deep breath. Antonio, we need, we need these next four rounds, baby. We need to, and you look okay? at the copy uh, box yes. numbers there, showing the significant difference in landed punches between... Dawson and Tarver, and here once again is a look at where Dawson's punches have landed throughout the fight. 53 on the face, 56 body shots. That means that he is liberally mixing the body in with his attacks to the head. Only six punches landing to the right side of Tarver's head, meaning that Dawson is far more prolific and effective with his right hook than he is with his left hand. Makes sense. He's a natural right-hander fighting with his stronger hand in front. Free up the hand. Ah, no, 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 no. Hit him behind the head. Don't hit him behind the head. Oh. Younger fighter once again stepping up the energy level and putting Dawson, I mean, putting Tarver on the defensive. Oh, stop, stop, step out, step out. Let's go. Dawson is looking much stronger. Much more pressure, but for just clean blows, he's maybe landing one out of every maybe ten, but that's enough when the other guy's not throwing anything. Landed a solid right hook there. Now Dawson momentarily with his back against the ropes. Let him go, Chad. Spins Let him go. away. This fight has a ways to go yet. Dawson should be ahead. But um, if he was hoping to, to create the kind of scintillating performance that would lure someone like Joe Calzaghe, who creates no, enough demand on, okay. to lure a guy like Calzaghe out of retirement or to create demand for a Bernard Hopkins fight, he's not doing that. He's not that kind of fighter. He's going to have to make his own mark. The, the quickest ticket to stardom is a win against a legendary name like a Hopkins. Don't think that's going to happen. He's going to have to make his own mark simply by being excellent over time and winning fights like this consistently. You know, I agree with you on everything, but what's making it so difficult is the fact that Tom is fighting one hell of a fight tonight himself. I mean, still the guy who's never been knocked out, very seldom ever saw him even hurt, solid amateur background, and very determined in the fight regardless of what his skill level may be. So it's a... Uh, Dawson did what he was supposed to do, but Tom is just an extremely determined fighter tonight. Yeah, but you uh, you footnoted uh, skill level, three whatever three his skill level might be. And what it appears to me, what appears to me as we watch it, Emmanuel, is that Dawson's skill level is higher. He lands more consistently, break, break and as you say, break his punches break. create more flash than that. Tom just does not want to cooperate tonight. And let him have the spectacular performance which he's wrong to have, in which, as you said, Max, he really needs to create the excitement because he's not getting it. He's, he's not creating excitement which would say, wow, he's got to fight Cal Zaggy if he comes back. You know, and, and yet, he's, he's not doing it. And yet he is showing the mentality of a real fighter, Dawson. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a big knockout puncher. He's not an overly aggressive fighter, but he is a real fighter. The way he's responded to Tarver when Tarver has landed and the way he's taking the fight to Tarver. No, the job, as you pointed out, Max, is for him to gradually, incrementally develop the following that makes it necessary for other fighters who don't have to fight him right now to go there and match up with him. Eventually. Do you not let your hands go, baby. You give him to Take that round off. No, you we can't afford that. We can't afford that. Okay. Listen to me. Keep stepping to him with the jab. At the end of every round, he's going to try to steal it. So once they start those flurries, drop something on them okay. and stop them from punching. 
Okay, he's fighting in spurts. Okay, get your butt. You gotta get your jab working. You're looking for the one punch. Okay, there's no tomorrow, T. This is your future, right here. Stop looking for the one punch. Okay. Here you see a typical punch of a young fighter just forcing his using his strength to just crush his way through on his opponent and just. Here you see a typical punch of a young fighter just forcing his using his strength to just crush his way through on his opponent. And, just, and, and that's the, tip, uh, the typical that he's doing tonight is punches like this here. Using his youth and his strength. Well, by CompuBox count, he has more than doubled Tar Tarver in the power punches landed category. 107 for Dawson, 51. And as you saw from the earlier graphic, Dawson's output has gone up here from the first fight. Tarver's has shrunk considerably. Harold, how do you have it through now? I'll get him seven rounds to two. 88, 83, fair, Chad Dawson. Jim, I gotta tell you, in rounds eight and nine, if Antonio Tarver would have landed half the punches that he missed, he probably would have knocked out Chad Dawson. I mean, if defense is 25% of scoring, you gotta give Chad real. Dawson credit. And no, because he slipped so. a million punches. He really gets on the, a lot of Antonio Tarver's shots. In the meantime, he's doing a lot more damage with that right jab. Constantly getting off first, backing a guy up, throwing two, three, four at a time, just like you saw there, and all overall outworking. Seven to two, Dawson. You know, Dawson said he wouldn't want to fight Glenn Johnson in a rematch unless he absolutely had to. Tip of the cap to Glenn Koff Johnson, who is. As I mentioned, uh, one of the best, least appreciated fighters in boxing. Um, he credits Johnson, Dawson does, with preparing him to fight Antonio Tarver. And uh, that might be the most logical opponent in the near future for Chad Dawson. A rematch with Glenn Johnson. See if there has been improvement there against an aggressive fighter like Johnson. You have to strap on your work boots to fight Glenn Johnson. It's never going to be easy. And his approach is not essentially defensively oriented, as, as Tarver's frequently is. Even though Tarver is throwing his hands here, he still plays a lot of defense. Letterman's right on the nose. Chad Dawson does an excellent job, particularly in the last three rounds, of hiding from Antonio Tarver's punches. He's there, somewhat in plain sight, but Tarver has trouble finding him when he releases. And there's a good right hook by Dawson. Five punch combination by Dawson. Four to the body and one upstairs. Harper gets in a jab. Right, your hands free, guys. Punch it out. Let's get out. There you go. Let's go, Let's go. Let's go. It's been a couple of rounds now since Antonio Tarver landed a threatening left hand, and more and more it appears that's what it would take to put him back into the fight. You give it rounds away. You give it rounds away. You ain't touching it, but you're not throwing, you're not firing back. You're making them miss, but you're not making them pay. All right? You're making them miss, you make them pay. All right? Mm -hmm. Take a drink. Come on, baby. Come on, Jay. Let's go to work, baby. Come on, man. Antonio, we need these next two rounds. We need them big. Okay, we don't need a knockout, but we need these next two rounds. Six minutes. You know you're in shape. Thanks, buddy. Six no problem. Of pressure, baby. Nice deep breath. We got to knock this guy. Let your hands go. Give me this. Yeah, I ain't seen you go to the body yet. What's up, man? Okay. Okay, lay down. Lean your head down. Lean your head down one second. Okay, listen to me. Stop looking for the one shot. We need combination. Let us out. We need the next two rounds, Antonio. The crowd in the joint at the Hard Rock Caf uh, Hotel and Casino. Not the cafe. Cafe's not cool. From the way their corner sounded, it sounded like Chad Dawson's corner, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, wants more of Dawson, wants to see Dawson win these rounds by wider margins. 
so that there's no ambiguity when it comes to the scorecards where it looks like this is heading. And it sounds like Buddy McGirt, he said he, we don't need a knockout, but maybe he doesn't want Antonio to try to force it, just, just win the rounds, and maybe a knockout will come. I think both cornermen gave their fighters good advice. I think Adam Mustafa was right on the money when he told him, uh, Dawson, you're, you're making him miss, but you're not making him pay, so, you know, and, and, and he's not missing all those punches. I thought that Tom had a decent amount of right jabs in last one. You know, even though Dawson may be getting wrapped up in defense, it's still you don't score points off of defense. Now, uh, Dawson may be thinking of the difficulties he has had finishing fights. Slowing in the last three rounds against Adamic, against Glenn Johnson notably, and even in the last two rounds against Tarver last fall. And, and it seemed as though he consciously limited his punch count in the ninth and tenth rounds to save something for the finish. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad just wants him to go fight. Quit thinking so much. Tarver. They've been few and far between in these last couple of rounds. I think he's been landing now a lot of jabs. The last, last two rounds, Tarver's been landing a lot of jabs. His jabs don't create that excitement. But, you know, the number type guy doesn't have that stiffness, but he still has been landing a lot of jabs these last two rounds. A round like this is what I meant by when, when I said Dawson's not always consistent and has these kind of moments in fights that make this, the, his, his grade something less than an A. Well, and particularly toward the end of fights. As much as anything, this appears to be his Achilles heel. A tendency to slow down in the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds. Seems to happen and he's him out of his lethargy. He's loading up on power shots, but overall still, Jesse, if you want to just pure punch his land, the top is one this round. Unless he can knock top it down. I'm not so sure. The right hook that Dawson landed a moment ago was much bigger than any other punch that Tarver has landed in the round. Tarver believes it. He throws his arm skyward. Well, if I was judging, I would give it to Tarver. Take a deep breath. Nice deep breath. Put your legs out. Put your stretch your legs out. Take a deep breath. Okay, champ. Champ, you need this round. We need it bad, team. We need this round. Get on out. Let your hands go, all right? Chin down. Don't get careless. Let your hands go. That's where you got to go. All right? Both hands. All right? This, I need this round. Don't look for the knockout. Score the points. You got it? Combination. You'll catch him in the blimp. Now, look. He's looking for the uppercut. Give me the hook. Look at this round. Okay, let's go to work. Last drop, finish strong. I need this round. I need this round. The hard rock of Las Vegas. Copybox numbers in the 11th round. Copybox saw Dawson landing 23 out of 70 and Carver 19 out of 89. Entering the final round, Copybox sees Dawson with a 193 to 107. Landed punches edge. Harold Letterman agreed with Emmanuel Stewart and gave the 11th round to Tarver. But I believe that's only the third round that Tarver has won on Harold's card. I agree. Not the same. Yeah, I gave him only about two rounds. I, I think he's been a good competitive fight. I think Bowser's won the fight. If he goes through the 12th round, he was downed in the 12th by Adamic. Got up and went on to win the fight. A knockdown by Tarver here would make the scoring interesting. It's a good point, Max. Dawson knocked Tarver down in the 12th round of their first fight. A knockdown by Dawson would make the score, scoring less interesting, I think. Let him up, let him up, let him up, let him up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on.
and, and looking for improvement in Dawson. I mean, you know, maybe it is, he is what he is. He's 26 years old now. He's been world class for a while. And maybe he's a B-plus fighter in a C division. Yeah, I think Tom is fighting a good fight tonight, though. I, I think he's fighting a pretty good Tom is just maybe a little bit more than he expected. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, he's going to have to fight a, a better fight, you know, because Tom is going to come in and fight a much more determined fight. And I just think Tom is just a little bit better tonight than he may not look at it pressing the way he does, saying, but still, he's not the easiest guy to fight. Well, what's the significance of that, Emmanuel? I mean, Tarver's going to lose this fight. It's probably the last time that we see him at this level. This is about how good Dawson is. Are you saying that Dawson deserves more compliments because Tarver has no. fought really well? No, he's fought good, but still, this thing's missing in, in Dawson right now. The one thing is to stick to his jab. He's led his last two rounds. Everything has been just loading up on power punches. Question is, yes. do you see an X factor in Dawson, which tells you that he would be a real threat to be Joe Calzaki or Bernard Hopkins if he could get a fight against one of those he, guys? He, he's young and athletic, and that usually bothers older fighters. Um, but uh, if you are a B-plus fighter in the C division, you could have a nice career. You just might not be a star unless another young fighter can come and distinguish himself in the same division. And, and, and you can get a rivalry going. At 168 pounds, there's Carl Frosch, who, should Dawson and Frosch make a fight in the next year or so, be a very interesting matchup, and I think hardcore boxing fans would be interested. How about the painfully slow progress of former Olympic gold medal winner Andre Ward? Absolutely. He's still wondering if Andre Ward will ever become a marquee figure in the sport. Meanwhile, it looks like Dawson just won the rematch. Um, it seems to me by about the same margin that he won the, the first fight. Considering Tarver fought a little better, maybe it's a little more impressive. But I think we know what we have in Chad Dawson. A very good fighter in his physical Harold Letterman has it 116 to 112. A wild hunch that's going to be a popular number. And uh, let's, he gave Tarver the 11th and 12th rounds both. The three official judges will score it. Alan Davis of Canada, two title fights, no notable fights. If we knew who he was, we would tell you so. Dwayne Ford of Nevada, well-known veteran of the sport. Had Manny Pacquiao beating Juan Manuel Marquez by three points in their second fight. That's wider margin than most ringsiders would have given Pacquiao in that victory. Patricia Jarman, 69 title fights, one of five out of six judges who had Jermaine Taylor beating Bernard Hopkins in their first two fights or their two fights here in Las Vegas. Now let's go to Michael Buffer to find out who won this one. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds here at the Hard Rock, Casino Hotel Resort of Las Vegas. We go to the scorecards. Alan Davis scores about 116 to 112. Dwayne Ford, 117 to 111. Patricia Mars Jarman, 117 to 111. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated and still IBF, IBO light heavyweight, champion of the world, Chad, Chad. So all three judges see Dawson winning either eight or nine of the 12 rounds in the fight. 